Um, but the point was that there, were, there was no real person who was an expert or had experience in uh, military tactics uh, in the program, uh, who could have actually uh, reflected upon the, what's called the fog of war, and how very often decisions taken up the chain of command actually translate very accurately down the chain of command. Uh, could you reflect on that, please? Well, I think that, that what we did deal with very clearly was um, what, who, where responsibility lies. And uh, we interviewed uh, Professor William Chapas, who's a, a, a leading international, I mean, one of the very top international uh, lawyers uh, sure. on, on human rights. And we discussed with him, um, and he, indeed he dealt with in the program, where does responsibility lie? Um, and how do you distinguish, for example, between a, a, um, a maverick soldier um, who acts without authority and, and commits an act of, uh, of barbarism, um, and the point at which that becomes systematic, systemic, sure. and sure. at which responsibility becomes collective. Yeah. Now, the reality is that we know from this footage um, that it was happening on a significant scale. Um, that is undoubtedly clear. We also know that there's a huge amount of evidence that it happened. If you look at all the footage that we showed, throughout that footage you will see that there are many, many soldiers filming um, on their mobile phones. Now, this evidence is there. This evidence would show, if properly assembled, how systematic it was, how widespread it was, and there is one organization which is in a position to very immediately, very openly, and very transparently find that out, and that is the Sri Lankan military. And the fact that the Sri Lankan military have failed so far, as far as we know, certainly failed to do it transparently, to collect all that information, to identify all those soldiers, to find out the soldiers who were filming and to get their footage, and to put together a genuine, honest, uh, full-scale investigation into what their soldiers, the men under their command, were doing. The fact that they haven't done that inevitably leads right-minded people to wonder why. Uh, and inevitably leads right-minded people to wonder if perhaps... Um, there is not sufficient rigor, and why there is not sufficient rigor in investigating what happened. I must apologize for this, Callum. I mean, I, 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 do, I, I imagine you would have a sense of frustration with my next question, given what you've said before, that you have been, throughout this interview uh, and throughout the program, the one hour program, uh, being critical of the LTT as well. But there seems to be the perception, I think it's reflected in this next question, that, for example, when the former IDPs were asked, uh, were, were featured on the program, why they weren't asked about what the LTT was doing uh, on issues of child conscription, uh, human shields, uh, their attempts to flee the tigers, etc., which have been actually documented by the UN uh, panel's report as well. Um, is this a question of perception or content? Uh, it's, certainly, it's, uh, it's certainly not a perception uh, of content. I mean, we interviewed a former uh, LTT fighter uh, and made quite clear that he had been conscripted at the age of 16. He was a child soldier. That is a crime. Um, uh, and, you know, I think that um, the fact that we showed, you know, well, probably one of, one of the sort of three or four most awful images in Absolutely. that film Absolutely. Um, is the, the soldiers picking up a dead Tamil child blown up by a LTT suicide uh, bomber. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, the crimes of the LTT are clear and the crimes of the LTT were clearly... Uh, described and, and pointed out in this film. The, the, suggestion, uh, I, it, uh, the suggestion that we are in some way not even-handed is just so completely flies in the face of what's in the film that, again, I come back to wondering why people have to resort to saying, to telling, you know, misrepresenting the film so much rather than actually answering the questions it raises. And the, the penultimate question, Callum, I, I do understand that our readers might, uh, might, might find this a bit too long, but I think these are vital questions also surrounding uh, the reception of the program in the country itself. Um, is that the, 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 I mean, coming to the commentary, uh, John's, John's commentary of it, uh, is that uh, there seems to be in some readers' perception, those who've seen the film, the kind of a disconnect between what is shown and what is commented upon. Two examples uh, have been quoted. Uh, one is that the commentary that the naked corpses had been raped, even though that there was no uh, visible evidence. Uh, and the, the same person asks, I mean, how did you know that they had been raped multiple times because there's no visible evidence demonstrated in you the clips? Do you want to answer that first? Um, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. I, I mean, actually, uh, again, we have this same problem. The commentary might uh, quite clearly says uh, words to the, I, I'm, you know, I may not have the precise no, no, words, but yeah, the, yeah. the commentary says 
that uh, they show evidence um, suggesting rape or sexual abuse. Uh, and that is based on, um, uh, I, I will double check that once we finish this, the yeah. actual wording, but it, it's along those lines. And um, what we're saying is that the evidence, um, uh, and, and this is with the, the, the help of, for example, uh, forensic pathologists. Now, a forensic pathologist, we had a, had a leading international forensic pathologist, looked at the footage and said uh, that, for example, this, uh, you know, one particular uh, body showed evidence of sexual abuse uh, or assault or rape. Um, and, you know, uh, it's to do with how the body's are, it's to do with, with the way the clothing is arranged and so on. So what we actually said was there is the suggestion of sexual abuse uh, and or assault and or rape. And that is absolutely something that we would stand by. I can give you the precise wording here. Yep. Um, some appear to have been raped or sexually assaulted and then murdered. Um, that is an ap absolutely accurate description of what happened. And that's not just a phrase snatched out of nowhere. Yep. That is a phrase after we have had this footage analyzed by forensic pathologists. Right. The other big one, and you are no stranger to this, this has been the biggest, one of the biggest ones. Uh, so much of the conversation and response is dominated by this is that there is no visible indication of those who do the killing that they are Sri Lankan army. There's no insignia, there's nothing that would suggest, for example, the, the observations all, all, always made, that these could well be uh, uh, LTT Carter uh, who have uh, fabricated the video. In fact, I think, if I recall correctly, there was even one person who went as far as to suggest that the video could have been done in Tamil Nadu. Um, and so, what's your response to that? There is no reason whatsoever to believe that these are anything other uh, than Sri Lankan soldiers. Um, they are wearing Sri Lankan soldier uniforms, they are speaking Sinhalese, um, they are the manner of their talk, the manner of their language, which we have analyzed by five separate translators, um, uh, is the language, uh, is the authentic language, or, 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 as would be spoken, an uh, authentic style of language uh, as spoken by um, uh, Sri Lankan soldiers. Um, there is references uh, which um, at least one uh, general should be concerned about to his name, which can be heard quite clearly. Um, there is absolutely no reason to doubt, and this is confirmed by the experts, that this is a genuine uh, video of, I'm afraid, Sri Lankan soldiers committing abuses and extrajudicial execution. Final question. Uh, this is also a big one. At least on the site, there was an article written about this, and there have been some, uh, a number of comments picking up on that article, but also <coughs> elsewhere, elsewhere on the site as well. The, uh, it's not just with regard to the video, mind you. Uh, it's also with regard to somebody else who wrote in uh, with um, how the, uh, the panel of experts report was also covered in uh, sites like Amnesty, International Crisis Group, and indeed our own site. Uh, and, and it goes something like this, that in, in the introduction, Jon Snow, uh, uh, claims that the UN panel has evidence uh, in, in the report uh, and that the report says that there are credible allegations. And the, the question is whether it is accurate to conflate <coughs> credible allegations with evidence. Um, well, if I could quote from Jon Snow's commentary again in the program, um, he says, it confirms, then in April, the UN panel, which investigated what happened in the concluding months of the war, published its report. It was devastating. It confirmed much of what our investigation has revealed and said it found, and then up on the screen came the words, credible allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity. The fact is that in addition to that, the uh, <coughs> panel report does quite clearly talk about um, uh, there being uh, credible evidence uh, to do with, uh, in relation to war crimes and crimes against humanity, credible evidence that the, that the uh, senior command knew of what was going on. I'm paraphrasing, but there was that reference as well. So um, it is true that there, uh, you know, what, they, what is said there is not true. We, we quite clearly make it clear that what they did was they found credible allegations. But actually, if you take the total of the report as well, it is true that it does collectively represent uh, credible evidence. Final question, Callum. Um, <coughs> um, this is difficult as a Sri Lankan to watch. Um, you are no stranger, as you have said at the beginning of uh, our interview, to documenting this kind of uh, horrific, horrific uh, content. What did you feel when you had done it and when, in a sense, you had broadcasted? Um, 
what did you really feel? What was going through your head when those images that have been often called the most gruesome ever to be broadcast on public television in England, certainly I can assure you some of the most horrific footage we have ever seen uh, in Sri Lanka. Um, what, did, what, what went through your head on a very personal level? I, it's, it's, um, it, it was a horror, I mean I have to say that making the film was a pretty horrible experience, but you know, when you're looking at this footage for hours and hours on end, you <laughs> um, are very conscious of the fact that at least all you're having to do is look at it. Um, and that you're watching people who are living through it. So in a sense, you know, there's no room to, to um, uh, you know, you, you have to kind of maintain that, that, that Distance, realization. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, um, it is, it is, it is I mean, funnily enough, the bits that, that stick with me and that actually, you know, I watch them more and more and more, the bits that I can't watch, um, just personally, um, that I find unbearable, are actually uh, the people who are left behind, the living people. Um, you know, the sequence of the girls um, uh, when, when their mother has been killed, and um, the sequence of people grieving. Funnily enough, um, on a personal level, that's, that's actually the bits that are most difficult to, to bear. Having said that, I'm mean, coming back to the, just the sheer horror of the execution footage and that kind of thing. Um, it is absolutely horrible. I, 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 you know, we should not have to show that kind of thing on television. I think the fact that this program has had such an effect and that people are now demanding justice in a way they weren't before is the proof that we were right to do it, horrible though it was. I know I cheated, I, I said the last question, but uh, do you, any of you, hope to come to Sri Lanka, ever? I would love to go to Sri Lanka. I think Sri Lanka is, I've been there. Uh, I think it's a, a, an absolutely lovely country. I think that uh, I, I found it a, 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 a warm and welcoming place. Um, and I think that, um, uh, I, I hope that so that Sri Lanka can recover and so that Sri Lanka can, can so that Sri Lanka can find a democratic solution to the divisions uh, and, and earn, uh, end the, the discrimination and the conflict. Um, I think I hope that Sri Lanka will confront what is depicted in this film and that some kind of system of justice, open and genuinely transparent system of justice and reconciliation, can bring this uh, terrible period to an end. Kelly, I appreciate very much the time you spent with us and uh, going through these, uh, these questions. And uh, we're recording this a day away from your public screening uh, at the Church Center in New York. Uh, and I hope that uh, members of uh, the Sri Lankan mission here also do come and not just watch, but also engage constructively. I hope so, I hope so too. Thanks very much, Kelly. Thank you.